Hello everybody, greetings and welcome to Tokyo Station. This is the Yaisu Central Entrance, which is, well, announced right there on the sign. And Tokyo Station is one of the biggest stations in the city, if not the biggest, because it seems like every single JR train line comes this way. Hey everybody, we're gonna be in this episode showing you the underground of Tokyo Station, taking you to the dungeons. And it's a place that is quite intimidating, even for me, someone who's been here for, for many, many, many years. It's easy to get lost down there. But hopefully with this guide, you'll be able to find your way around. That here is the central, that's the central exit. So um, there's two sides of Tokyo Station that you need to know. This is very important. There's the Yaisu side, which is the one we're at right now. Yaisu spelled Y-A-E-S-U. And it's the new side. It's, it's the side that doesn't have um, the history because that's the other side. The other side is called Marono Uchi, M-A-R-U-N-O-U-C-H-I. And that's the side that was built around uh, 1911, 1912 by a famous architect in brick. It's very old and very cool. We're gonna be going to that side underground, but first we have to find our way there. Now, you can, you can go underground inside the station, but you need a ticket to do that. The way that I'm gonna be going is through the shopping arcades, which is a great place, not just for shopping for clothes and stuff, but for eating, tons and tons of restaurants. Looks like we have a, a school tour going through here. And the way to get to the underground is to basically exit the station and go underground. And from here, there is a tunnel that will take you to the other side. So you don't have to walk all the way around the station. It's a beautiful spring day here in Tokyo. <laughs> Leopold, <laughs> follow the schoolgirls. I don't think so. That's, that's how you get arrested. Um, the, the side of the Yaisu side has been renovated maybe the last couple of years. It's been really nice. Before that, it was quite basic, but now we have this really nice look at, hold on a second, architecture, loads of stairs, and this, this kind of canopy makes it seem like it really is 21st century. And when you get to the other side, when you get there, you're going to be able to, to tell why. Because the Mononuchi side looks like uh, definitely 20th century. So let's say goodbye to the daylight, everybody, because we're about to leave. We're about to leave sun and go to night. Because that's what dungeons are all about. We're going to the underground, everybody. Let's, let's hope we don't get lost. Because <laughs> this is the guide not to get lost. All right. All right, so now we are now underground. Now, I've done a couple of underground live streams, and the, and the signal has been pretty good. So I, I don't expect us to have any, have any um, issues with that. This is, once again, for those who are joining us, Only in Japan Go, which is all live streams. We have right, right down the, right down the uh, stairs, you have a, a cafe that looks like a Starbucks. All, all newly done. This is a SoftBank mobile phone carrier. One of the bigger shops that they have. Usually you can get pretty good service here compared to the other ones. They have English speakers. And what you see here on the Yaisu side are a bunch of shops. This is basically what you get. I'm going in the wrong direction right now, but I just wanted to show you just a little bit of what the shops look like. Now, the on the Yaisu side here, there's two streets that go underneath the main street in front of Tokyo Station. Underneath the street, I'd say it's about 150 meters worth of shops and restaurants and things like that. There's a couple of, of hamburger shops that are, that are pretty famous. I'm not talking about McDonald's. I don't know. A lot of these chains from... A lot of these chains from the United States are, are making their way in for the Olympics and you're seeing that in uh, um, these new restaurants coming to the city. So I'm just gonna take you for a second. This is the Yaisu side. And on a rainy day, to get to the bus stops and things like this, it does make sense to go underground. Here's a Hokkaido food. A Hokkaido food shop. And you can see it's just a walkway and a corridor. That's street one. And if we go over here, you can see street two.
There you go. Street number two. And along here, there'll be restaurants and, and um, places to buy clothing. There'll be, I think there's even a, a convenience store. Yeah. So let's now make our way under the station where I'm gonna show you some of the places where you can buy a lot of gifts. Like, and, and by gifts, I mean like Kit Kats and boxes and stuff. Oh, this looks so good. Oh, this is a Kobe bakery, Kobe ya. Croque pan, check that out. A little bit of egg in between there. Sauce, some banana cake. And look at these, these, these are cream melon pans. Inside of there is custard. Oh man. I love bakeries in Japan. Ah, stop it, okay. We're on a mission. We're on a mission. So let's go to the gift area. Now, this is underneath the street in front of the station. Now we're walking back towards Tokyo Station. And we're gonna go underneath the station right now. Again, there's some more streets. They have actually have names to these streets. Sotoborichika, 3rd Street, you can see up there. So it is easy to find your way around if you know the streets. If you don't, you're in trouble. <laughs> I've, I've, been, I've had friends tell me, I'll meet you on this street. And I'm like, I don't even know where it is. It's not even on any map. But here's, here's another one. You have the 2nd Street. And then on this, it goes across here. Once again, there's like tons and tons of shops. Here's a Sony Plaza. Sony Plaza is one of these shops from 20 years ago that I used to go in there to get foreign foods, but I no longer need to do that because the foreign foods are at Costco and everywhere else. But Sony Plaza was one of those, those original shops that had a Western influence where they brought stuff from the West into Japan through Sony, Sony's plazas. All right, we're going now underneath the station. I hope you're ready. Follow the guy with the backpack. Hey, Photoluk Hawaii. Aloha, Johnson. Aloha. Shout out to Austin. And thank you, Christina and Carlos. I really appreciate it. Really appreciate it. Oh, this is also where you'll find. Now, we're, now we've just entered the station area. We're now underneath the station. All right, this bento. They sell, they sell bentos inside the station, but this is outside of the station. We're under it. And this is where you can find a... Um, like a Kobe bento, Kobe beef bento. I'll go here for like five seconds. Wow. That's $60 for that. Oh, and this one's got, this one's $100. Check that out. Looks good though. It's a famous shop. All right, that's a famous shop. Now we're getting in, we are directly underneath. Oh, check it out. This is where they grill the bentos. He's cleaning the grill. How cool is that? We're now underneath the station. We're now underneath Tokyo Station. And this is where you're gonna find a lot of gifts and things like this. People come down here to pick stuff up, to get on the Shinkansen, to take back to their family all over the country. This is just an access point and lots of things in, in colorful boxes. Check out these pokey. They have like five flavored super pokey. There's 20 in that box and the box costs about $13. Oh, this is new. Who else loves wieners? <laughs> no, no, those aren't wieners. Those aren't hot dogs. Those are, this is a, a Japanese snack with peanuts and little mini senbei. All right, let's, let's, let's go deeper into the station. We are now underneath the station. Those of you who have been here know where I am. It hasn't really changed too much in 20 years, this area. That right there, now you could cut through to the Maranucci side if you had a ticket. We're not gonna do that. We're going to a secret, secret corridor underground. 
We're still on the ice's side. Let's take a look at some of the gifts that you can buy down here. Whoa! Thought the Shinkansen was coming right at me. That's awesome. <laughs> All right, now this corridor goes on for about, I'd say 150, 200 meters as well underneath the station. It looks just like this. It's, it's uh, bright and loud. And here's the map. You can see it loaded with tons and tons of stores. Um, we're on this level. We're right in the middle. You are here. <laughs> But on the red side are, are restaurants and shops. And on this side, the purple represents um, character goods stores. So for characters. And the red stops, uh, the red ones are, are restaurants. So you can see it's kind of divided down here by food and goods. So let's take a look at the restaurant. And we're going to walk back and look at the goods. And then we're going to go towards the Maduro Uchi side. This is the way to get there. This is the secret corridor. And we're going to walk through there. But before we do that, let's investigate. Just, we're just gonna take a quick look down the restaurants and make our way back. So the next three, four minutes is gonna be dedicated to walking around this area. Again, we got some sushi shops. And it's just starting with the lunch, <coughs> with the lunch hour. So a lot of people are getting off of work to go and eat right now. see what we can find. Whoa! Oh, I saw this. Is this the same shot from Toyama? No, no, it's a little bit different. Check it out. I think it could be. Yeah, this is the same shot from Toyama. That's awesome, they're here. This is a white shrimp of Toyama. Check it out. They have a really unique shrimp. Ebi, and uh, I ate this when I was there in Toyama a few years ago, and it's so good. If you find this, come and ch come and ch try it, and it's on sale right now. It's uh, eleven dollars. About you can get it from the vending machine. Oh man, this is very nostalgic. We said natsukashi. Let's see, they're in there in the kitchen making it. Wow! And now you can see a lot of people are are uh, getting their lunch. We're just at the lunch hour, so in about five minutes, it's gonna get super crowded as all of the office workers get off of work to go and eat lunch. All right. Oh, wow, well, there's some ramen over there. Yes, we do love ramen. There's some suke men. It's nice down here. This is the Tokyo Ramen Street. Whoa! This is the Tokyo Ramen Street. Well, we're gonna have to tr check this out, aren't we? What? This is kind of new. So we have all these kinds of ramens in the Ramen Street. They have veggie ramen. For those vegetarians out there wondering if they have an option, they do. It's tomato-based ramen. Look at this. Very nice. It's called Nippon. Um, Sora no it. Sora no Iro. That's the name of the shop. This one also, uh, vegetarian ramen here. Vegan. Be vegan. So this is a vegan ramen. Really? And that's pretty cheap too. Never seen that before. Um, gluten free. Gluten free. This is gluten free. I've never seen gluten-free in katakana before. Gluten-free, it says. And then this one has, uh, um, okay, I see. Then there's a shio, and then there's miso. So there's di different, different kinds of ramen. That's pretty neat. Here's what the street looks like. The people are lining up. Thanks, Gil. What's your fave in ramen alley? Wow, that's hard to say. I, I haven't actually, Hey Gail, I haven't actually eaten any of these in Ramen Alley here, but I have to say I'm, I'm a big fan of miso ramen. I love miso ramen. But you can see at lunchtime people are lining up and it's really easy to get in there. 
you, the thing with ramen shops is you eat and you get out. These are not cafes, places that you would sit there for a long time. When you order ramen, you, you get in there, you slurp, you eat, you get out. And especially when there's a line, you have to think about the other people that are waiting in line that are hungry to get something. This is the, the vegan ramen. Check it out. I like this. Very well done. They have a place for you to leave your suitcases and luggage. Just so if you're on the run, you, have, you can leave your bags here. No one's going to take it. This is Japan. And then you get your stuff at the vending machine. And then there's a staff member there to, make, to facilitate and make sure that nobody has any problems. And vegetable live long is their motto. <laughs> I'd have to agree. If you eat a lot of vegetables, you probably do live a little longer. But I, I, I sure, sure will miss a chunk of chashu piece of meat right there. Oh, it smells like ramen here. Man, it's good. Ah, oh, that nice, beautiful smell of delicious ramen. Yum, yum. All right, we're back. All right, let's make our way now towards the character goods store. It's gonna take us about a minute to get there. I had, that was interesting. I had not walked through Ramen Street before. I, that's the first time. I, we definitely need smell-o-vision. We definitely need smell-o-vision. And I, what I liked about that Ramen Street, they had about six or seven restaurants it looked like, and there's more. There's more ramen. And each, each ramen shop has like a, a, a distinctive flavor, whether it's vegetable, uh, vegan, vegetarian, pork, miso, uh, shio aji, which is salt. Everyone has something that's, that's uniquely different. And I, I like that about Ramen Street. You get a chance to, to pick one of everything. Oh, that's a nice looking udon. I can, you know, if I compare it just about three minutes ago when I walked through here, you can smell the food now out here in the corridor on the Yaisa side. Now we're passing that white Ebi, the white shrimp uh, shop that I just love. Ah, oh, I had this in Toyama. Guys, you gotta try this, it's so good. That's a nice set for $11. And again, they have a place, they usually have a place for luggage. I like that. All right, there's the entrance back up to the first floor, but that's not where, go where we're going. We're going now to the character goods side of the modern, the Yaisu underground in Tokyo Station. Hey, Abe, thank you. All right, we're on the move, everybody. Hello, Lourdes Evans, thank you very much. And Carlos, Bitancourt, John, Rokurinsha in the lower level of Tokyo train station is my favorite ramen of all time. I might have gone past there. Best suke men ever. It sounds like that they do. Thanks, Carlos. And thank you, Max. Thanks, guys. All right, this side now, we're on the character goods. So let's check out what they have. What does that even mean? What that means is that all of the TV networks here, I'm talking about like TBS, Fuji TV, Nippon Terebi, um, TV Tokyo, NHK, as well as a lot of the movie studios like Ghibli have shops down here. So if you're looking for Ghibli goods, this is a place to go. Lego has a shop here. You can see there's some characters that, that people have seen on TV. So this is mostly for Japanese, unless you're into Japanese TV, the Ghibli store is where it's all at. There is some one, I think there's a, a Shonen Jump store. So let's go, let's go just check it out really quickly. I just walk, oh, and this is the way towards, towards the Marono Uchi side. You can see it, the sign in the middle of your screen. We're gonna be making our way through there. This is the deepest part of the station. Yeah, this, that's, this is all like character goods you can see here. Max writes in here, hey John, awesome to see some vegan options. My vegan girlfriend, hi Nicole, and I will be in Tokyo in November. Any vegan selections, um, suggestions for her? I actually, oh, here's the Shonen Jump store. And you can see 
there's some One Piece items in here and Dragon Ball items that I think you would really like. There's the NHK character store. I've been here before. Um, so you can find some uh, Dragon Ball Z and One Piece and lots of other stuff. Keychains, snacks, food, cookies, all sorts of stuff. Yeah, you know, the next episode that I'm putting out, the next episode that's that's coming out is in Kochi Prefecture. And one of the three that I made there is on a vegan street food market. It's the Sunday market in Kochi, in Kochi City, and they had a ton of vegan options. And vegan means like no dashi, no fish soup stock in it, and it's hard to find this kind of, of sushi or, or food items that doesn't have anything in it that has no meat, including fish stock, and we were able to find that. Um, I don't know too much about the vegan options, but it's something that I'll be diving into a little bit more this year. So I appreciate asking for that. No dashi, no life. <laughs> that's, that's, that could be true. That could be true. Dashi is a really delicious uh, 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 salty fish soup stock that's in like everything. All right, and th th this is what I'm talking about. Lots and lots of characters, character stores. Gives you an idea of what we have here. There's the Fuji TV store. So there's a lot of the Fuji TV characters are here, as well as the, the um, Terebi Tokyo. There's TV Tokyo store. There's a TBS store. And I've been on um, the TBS news program many times. Uh, there's uh, Lotte, TV Lotte. I've been on a show called Hiroobi about 10 times reporting about um, tourism to Japan for only in Japan. It's pre pretty cool. And last but not least, before we make our way to the Madanuchi side, we're going to... Oh, that's so cute. I don't even know what character that is, but he's wearing a... That cat's wearing a panda. I wonder if he had to, to skin the panda to get it on there. Not a very nice... When you, if you think deeply about that costume, it's sort of disgusting. <laughs> like, like, what? Did he skin the panda and wear the panda like Hannibal Lecter? I don't know. Uh, and this is the Ghibli shop here. You, if, if, you, if you look carefully, you'll see Totoro in the upper right. You have to have sharp eyes to find Totoro in the forest. But the Ghibli store, this is a small one. They usually have some pretty neat items. Um, traditional Japanese goods that have your favorite Ghibli stuff on them. Like look at these fans, they're called Senso in Japanese. And you can see there's the Neko and Totoro fan. I love that. There's some Totoro chopsticks. And there's Sento Chihiro spirited away stuff here. Ah, oh, look, there's a, a Totoro towel set. I love this. So very nice. Ah, Totoro coffee mug. Is that a Totoro coffee mug? Yeah, it is. I'd love to have my my break, my morning coffee with Totoro. <laughs> All right, let's move. Let's move our way to the Madanuchi side. We're 23 minutes in. Oh, check it out, there's Pokemon luggage. What? All right, let's just stop here for a second. We have to highlight, highlight the Pokemon carry case. How awesome is that? That's really cool. Oh, and there's an Eevee. <laughs> Nice. So these bags are about a uh, hundred dollars or so. That's that's kind of reasonable. Um, all right, we're going now towards the Madanuchi side, everybody. I'm taking you to this side of the station. We're now leaving Yaisu, which and we've been looking at the to Tokyo Gourmet Zone as well as the, the character goods shop. And the path is taking us this way. Now we're going to be going deep, deep, deep underneath the station, going underneath the tracks. Anybody can go this way. You don't need a ticket to get in. Check it out. That's really cool. They have some sort of um, 
carry out, I guess. A lot of guys waiting. Waiting for that. Most of the people that go out to eat are guys that didn't make a bento at home. <laughs> Their wife doesn't love them, maybe, I don't know, but... Yeah, it's always, it's always nice when you have a bento to, made by uh, um, your wife or your mother or your, even if the other side or your husband and your father. You, a lot of people will eat the bento at work and not go out to eat for lunch because it can be a little bit unhealthy eating out all the time. They put a lot more salt in the, in the food. It's delicious, but it's a little bit more expensive and a little bit more salt. Okay, so there's some more there's some more restaurants here. So now we're 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 right underneath the tracks of Tokyo Station. You can see there's a bunch of restaurants and a more traditional looking place. I think that these are restaurants are a little bit pricier. Yeah, this is called Kitchen Street, and Kitchen Street has uh, different dining options. This one's a little bit pricier. Here's a map, right there. This is a completely different street than where we just were. It's a, we're in the basement level, the first floor and the second floor. And these are some of the items that you have here. All of them look really good. No complaints at all. Very nice. The Ebisa bar, if you like beer, you can get a beer and you can get some good food. All right, back on course. Oh, there's some Shinkansen pilots. They look like the um, um, airline pilots, but they're for, for the Shinkansen. You see that? They got the white staff on, white uh, suits on. All right, follow the Shinkansen captains. All right, we are now deep, deep underneath the station, underneath Tokyo Station, going towards the other side from Yaisu to Maruna Uchi. If you do have a ticket, you can go up or enter into the station here. But, oh, you have to go all the way to the other side in order to, to get into the station now. So we, right now from this point, we've, we've technically left Yaisu side and we've entered Maranouchi side right now. It's like entering a totally different state. If, you, if you're driving across the US, it's like going from, from Pennsylvania to Ohio or something. We are now in Ohio, OH. All right, here we go. This is it. Welcome to the Maranucci side. Now this side is a little bit newer. Although the Yaisu side was renovated, this side is a little bit newer with the underground. Um, this, the, the Maranucci side of Tokyo Station was built in 19... 1911 or 1913 around that time um, the beginning of the 20th century and the architecture shows but underneath underneath here this was done of course a lot later all right we're hanging a left here look at that do you see the pillar here this post is made like a it's it's a plushy post check it out <laughs> what what They could be Totoro, I don't know. It's hard to say. That's pretty, it's pretty cool. Not all posts are created equal. It has a butt. <laughs> That's the butt of Tokyo Station. It's a 360 butt. All right, and now on the Maranji side, you can enter through here. This is the north entrance to the underground. So Maranouchi North is small, but it's practical. And you, the, the, reason why, the reason why you would take this entrance is because you're leaving, you're getting out of the um, Maranouchi subway line. The subway is of course underground being a subway. The entrance to Maranouchi is this way. I'm gonna take you there, but take a look at the map. Let me just show you where we've come, where we, where we started. We started um, right here. I, no, we started right here under underneath. I took you in the beginning to show you the shops here on this street, underneath this underneath the street here. Then we walked underneath the station to the character shops and the restaurant zone. Then we just walked through here, and this is where the restaurant zone was. The other one, 
and now we're on the Maranucci side and I'm gonna show you this area. This is a little bit more complicated in a way, but I've been here a million times. You can walk all the way underground to Yurakucho Station, which is where the International Forum is, where the big camera is. It, it's about a, a kilometer walk. It takes about 15 minutes to get there, but you can do it all underground, which is neat. And right here are the um, uh, Maru building and the, sh and the new Maru building, Shin Maru buildings. And these are really convenient access points to get really nice views of Tokyo Station as well as lots of restaurants on the first seven floors. Let's go check it out. My brain is filled with useless knowledge for tourists. <laughs> it really, really is. If you were to go straight here, and you, you can go directly to the Imperial Palace. Do you see that? So you can also go underground, which is, this is good to know for rainy days, completely underground all the way to the Imperial Palace. And if you go straight that way, it'll take you to, to the Mita line, which is the Toei Mita line. And that's a useful line. It's a blue colored ring, but it's quite a walk. I'd say it's about 400 meter walk, which is a quarter of a mile, maybe more. All right, I always, now I, I, I always buy from vending machines my tickets, but if you need to jump into a ticket window, the one under, underground is usually not crowded at all. So it's very easy to get the tickets from underground because people underground are, are usually already know what they wanna do. It's a little mini Starbucks here. So the windows here, the office here is very easy to get the tickets. But if you've got a JR rail pass, you have to go to the Maranucci north side to validate it, I believe. Whoa. That looks good. Let's check out these tarts. Nice. I'll be back. This, if you saw one of the most popular live streams on the Only Japan Go channel, I, I started it right here. This is the window, and this is where I always get my Shinkansen tickets to go to Tokyo. I'll get off of the Maruno Uchi line, and I'll run and get a ticket here. And uh, you can pay by credit card with the, um, the machines on the, the yellow machines. You can pay by credit card. The green machines, you got to pay by cash only. Oh, you can pay by credit card for both of them. So the yellow ones are credit card only, and the blue green ones are credit card and cash with a pin code required. So um, that's kind of good to know. The schedules for the Shinkansen are above you on the TV monitors above. So you can see which ones are available. And there's a kind of a marker here. The green ones mean that there's seats available. The triangles mean there are a few seats and the red X's mean it's sold out. So you can see um, what the status is of the train that you might want to ride. That's kind of useful information. You don't want to get on a train that's too crowded. And once again, you have information in English and in Japanese. These are the lines. The platform is on the left side. You see here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It'll tell you what line is at that platform. So it's easy for you to navigate in. If you know the platform number, it makes a big difference because the numbers are a little bit bigger than Yamanote line. You just go platform four goes towards Ikebukuro. Platform five goes towards Shibuya Shinagawa. Oh, this is where Kanai buys her dashi. This is a, a famous dashi shop you can see here. I don't know, she likes to buy it here. It is good though. That's not vegan. All right, so this is my runway. This is where I sprint. I, 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 I do, I sprint this way. I will dash out of the Maranucci line right there towards the JR line to catch my Shinkansen. I've done that like, I don't know, two dozen times. And uh, this is where you would get, you get out of the, the JR line and you would have to walk through this corridor to get to the Maranucci subway line. And this is the entrance to the subway line for Maranucci. Um, Maranucci is also like a circle line. It does go around the city of Tokyo in a circle, but it goes in a different direction. It goes in a different way. Let me see if I can get a, a map here. There's the um, subway office.
By the way, Maranucci is the only line that has a station for Tokyo Station for subway. It's the only line. The, the closest other subway stations, your options are um, to get to Tokyo Station, your options are Nihonbashi or Otemachi, or you can even walk from Yurakucho, which is kind of a far walk. But Otemachi has about five train lines that go through there. And then Maranuchi is the only one that has one right at Tokyo Station if you're taking the subway. It's good to know. You hear that beeping? Is the tickets, people uh, exiting the tickets, uh, ticket turnstile. When a child goes through, it, it does a different sound and a light goes on. This, this prevents people from buying children's tickets, which are half price. So the, the uh, ticket guy at the gate knows if a child goes through, the sound goes, it has a different sound to it. All right. So we're not gonna go towards Yurakucho, but you could. You could go all the way underground to Yurakucho. Instead, what I'm going to take you to is, is towards the Shinmaru building. And we're going to go underground to the Shinmaru building. And I'm going to show, or sorry, or the Maru building. And I'm going to show you a look back at where we just walked. But I'm, I'm telling you, at, at first, it could be quite intimidating to make your way around the basements of Tokyo Station, the dungeons. But really, it's not that hard because you have tons of maps, never freak out and just slowly go around. You can see here, this is probably the best map that I've seen in the mall, this tra train station information map here. So we started here at the Yaisu Central exit. I, I started inside the station showing you the entrance right here of the Shinkansen. But we walked out this way. Then we went underground. I showed you this area. We walked through this corridor and we're over here now. And now we're deep into the Maranouchi side. I'm gonna take you up to the top and we can look back at um, we can look back at Tokyo Station. This is also where you would get the Narita Express. Oh, I gotta point this out to everybody. The Narita, Narita Express is best accessed from the Maruna Uchi side. If you get in from this side, to get there, you have to walk through all these crowds of people to get underground to the, to the um, Narita Express. That's why I say it's always easier to take a bus, just because you have to go through tons of escalators and stairs to get down there, and it's just not worth it. Plus, the train is only once an hour. I always say the bus is the best way, and you can catch a 1,000 yen bus from here. This is where you get the airport, Narita Airport bus stop right there. 1,000 yen will, will get you to the airport in almost the same amount of time. I don't think you save a lot of time with the Narita Express, but the Narita Express is a train, and people do come to Tokyo or to Japan with the hopes of riding trains because they don't have that in the United States. Our trains in the U.S. really stink. So you want to ride some nice trains when you come to Japan. I get that. All right, now I'm taking you up to the top of Maranouchi, to the ob one of the observation decks where we can look back at Tokyo Station and see what we've just accomplished, which is, which is an accomplishment. We've done something, I think, pretty, pretty cool. On this map here now, it's it's another type of way to see the modern Uchi side. See the bricks? That's the pattern of this old 20th century side of the station. Um, and this is the moat and the imperial palace is up here. That could be the queen of another country. All right, let's get in here. We're going up up towards the modern, uh, modern Uchi building, which should be like right here. Sorry, right here. And we're right here. So we just have to go here. Let's do it. The Maranucci side is a little bit more relaxed in a way. There's a ton more office buildings here, but people don't at lunchtime come back to the station. They usually will go to the restaurants underneath their office building. There's no reason to, to um, fight your way around the station area again. So it's a little bit more relaxed on the Maranucci side. Again, you're starting to hear the pings of the people exiting the Maranucci line.
All right, here we go. Let's go back up to the Moderna Uchi building. I come here all the time because there's, there's two reasons why. There's an ATM for the um, Tokyo Mitsubishi UFJ. I think it's just called Mitsubishi UFJ now. There's, a, there's an ATM for that bank over here. And uh, there's a bunch of restaurants and shops in here. So if you go underneath the Shin Maru building and the Maru building right here, this is one of the exit points out. You can get out here. You can see there's daylight, which is the first daylight we've seen in 30 minutes. Or you can go down this corridor. There's some more restaurants. And this is where you'll start going into Otemachi Station, which is the neighboring station to Tokyo Station. It's not that far away. But we're going to go this way. Past the Godiba shop. In Japanese, I think in English we call this God, uh, Godiva. And in Japanese we say Godiba. So there's some Godiva chocolate. Might have to make my way back here. Get something for Kanai. Again, this is more like office stuff, so it does look nice. It's got that, that, that corporate granite rock feel to it over here. This is between the two buildings, Shin Maru and the Maru building. The two buildings kind of look like one another. The Shin Maru building is newer than the Maru building. The word Shin, S-H-I-N, meaning new. As an adjective, it would be uh, atarashi, but as a, like a mod I guess it's a modifier, just something that you would add in front of something, like New Tokyo Station would be Shin Tokyo. New Tokyo, like Shin Bashi, new, new bridge. <laughs> All right, here we go. We're now in the Moderna Uchi building. Let's go up the escalator, and I'm gonna take you to a viewpoint that we've been to before in these live streams but it's a way to look back and talk about what we've just accomplished. Oh, there's another UFJ ATM, duly noted. So, a lot of fashionable shops. Okay, here we go. We're going up here. Stand on the left, walk on the right. Stand on the left, walk on the right. I love the modern Uchi side. You see how forested? There's lots of trees on this side. I love it. Not quite there. We're coming close to the end of this, this trip. All right, so these two buildings, the modern Uchi and the Shin modern Uchi building, of course, they're on the modern Uchi side, which is the side closest to the Imperial Palace where the emperor lives which makes it some prime real estate, wouldn't you say? And up here on the fifth floor is where you have Kua Aina Burger, a Hawaiian burger chain, which is very popular in Japan. You can get overpriced hamburgers um, for like $20, but they'll fill you up and they taste pretty good too. Uh, I can smell the... Um Someone has that uh, aromatic oils, the uh, lemongrass smell. Makes me hungry. All right, here we go. Welcome to the fifth floor, and we're gonna, we're gonna sneak outside and get a view of this beautiful station. There it is right there. Hey, Mark, greetings from Osaka. Automatic door, open sesame, use the force. There you go. Didn't touch a thing. 
And now we all can look back at the amazing Tokyo Station Maranucci side. It really is beautiful. Look what we did, guys. Is this not awesome? 45 minutes. Lovely day in Tokyo. Last year, I believe they finished the renovations. And now we have the brand new, brandly newly renovated Maranucci side to Tokyo Station. Looks awesome. From 19, 19, uh, 11 I believe I, I want to say 1911 It's a beautiful contrast to the modern skyscrapers behind it On the right side coming into view is the International Post Office This is also really important to know because this post office is open. I'd say 24 hours a day There's a, a small window that's open for sending pa parcels and packages um, but the main main post office area is open from 9 to 9 every day including Sunday it's really good to know because as as Katayama just wrote we have some amazing supporters on patreon um, uh, with the postcard club and I send packages to people on patreon and that's I, I come here a lot to send the packages off or the postcards to get the Tokyo postmark on it if you send it your postcards from here all right you will always get Tokyo Station or Tokyo as the postmark on the stamp and I like that, you know, when I send the postcards, I want them to have a cool stamp on it, including the stamp that's canceled. Oh, there's the, the Yamanote line swinging by. And we start, and the Shinkansen as well. And we started this live stream on, hey Nathaniel, we started this live stream on the other side of the station. And we've walked underneath it and come up on the Maranucci side and that's just so cool. Do you have any questions, anybody? I'm here for you. If you have any questions you can let me know um, in the comments below and if you like these tours these walking tour episodes live like this click that like button right now It'd be nice to get up to uh, even half of the people that are watching right now welcome to everybody joining us yeah we've been here before right yes uh, I believe it was about six months ago I walked um, from Yonakucho above ground following the Yamanote line and we ended up, we ended right here, or we began right here, I can't remember. You should say hi to the guy next to you. He's on the phone. <laughs> Are you married? Yes. Name more Pokemon names. Uh, I wish. Pokemon Kai Yu Yabonam Pijon. How old is this station? Um, I would say Tokyo Station is quite old, but this modern Uchi side is from the early 20th century. I want to say 1911. But the station, of course, it goes back even further. Um, it was different, but it wasn't as grand as, as what it looks like here. You know, this is just a beautiful, grand-looking looking, uh, um, station front. Tips for learning kanji? I don't, I don't know. I can't read any kanji. <laughs> just, start, just start writing it and learning word combinations. Yeah, Make flashcards. What's the air smell like? <sighs> Fresher? Fresher than it did uh, in, underneath, underground. Yeah, the other side is different. In what situation would you buy a 100 yen bento? If I wanted, if I wanted 100,000 people to watch a YouTube video, I might buy a $100 bento. Usually people are curious of what it would taste like. That would be something that somebody can do. Um, I, I don't know if, the, if it's Kobe beef. I know it's Wagyu. But it's really high quality beef, that $100 um, Wagyu bento that I showed you. And it comes freshly cooked and put in that plastic tray so you can carry it on the Shinkansen hot. I love that. And they do that, it's $100 for that um, bento. You can get a $300 Kobe beef bento in Shin Osaka Station. So there's even one above that one. That's, that's the most expensive bento that I've seen in Tokyo Station though. That's the, that's the most uh, expensive. Yeah, let's try to get the 400 likes here. I'll take a couple more questions for you, from you. Um, please come to Hokkaido and eat horse meat. Actually, horse meat is the best from Kumamoto in Kyushu, not from Hokkaido. You could try staying in hostels. That would, They tend to be cheaper. They do. Um, a lot of them are, are sold out right now. I walked into one and asked them, and they have no vacancies for a month, which is crazy. How crazy are things going to get during the Rugby World Cup? Not, not here, not too crazy because the, ven 
Tokyo is not host to any of the Rugby World Cup games. It's an entry point, Narita Airport, and the people are going up north um, to different places. Let's see here. Are you, there's Colin, Colin writes in here, went to the station as a kid 15 years ago with my dad and younger brother. I've never forgotten so much. I've forgotten so much, need to return. You definitely need to return, Colin, with your kids. They're gonna love it. They're gonna love it. There's so many great places to walk around, not just the station, but the city of Tokyo has, has really renovated. It's easier to walk around than it was 20 years ago when I first came. The illustrious Purdy, thank you for the view. You're very welcome. Thank you for the super chat and the support. It means a lot to me. What's the air like underground? Good ventilation? I would say so. I didn't have any problems. Um, you know, they, they pump it in there. Um, Subham Kumar has $100. I'm proud of you. <laughs> that's, that's $100 more than I have. Uh, Reina, have you ever been to Tokyo Disneyland? Yes, many times. Actually, actually I have a couple of live streams um, from Tokyo Disney Sea and Tokyo Disneyland about a year ago. Um, my family came from the United States and uh, I took them um, after my wedding, after the wedding, to Tokyo Disneyland. So um, I don't live too far away from there, actually. I can probably get there by, tra in, by train in about 25 minutes, which is pretty neat. Because that's always the dream, right? To, to live next, next door to Disney World or Disneyland, right? You can look outside your balcony and see the castle. That's, that's sort of the, you know, a lot of people's dreams. Um, how is it different 20 years ago in regards to walking around Tokyo? Um, 20 years ago, like this, they, they've widened in many places. They've widened the sidewalks in many places. It's a lot cleaner and, and easier to get around, especially this area. They've renovated it. This did not exist. So do you see here? This was just all roads for taxis and, and stuff, but they've turned it into almost like a park or a huge meeting area. Loads and loads of places like this around the city. They've also created on the sides of the roads here, bike lanes. Now you, it's not a real bike lane, but usually there'll be blue arrows on the road with little icons for bicycles. And it makes it easier because technically you're not allowed to ride your bike on the sidewalk. You're supposed to ride it on the street with the cars, but a lot of people don't know that um, because cars will park on the side where the bike lane is. It, New York has the same problem. There's tons of little things that have, that have uh, changed over the last 20 years that make it a big thing, I think, for just walking around the city. Shibuya also is, is, has been redone, and I think by the end of this year, you're gonna see a massive difference in what the station looks like. Let's see here, will you do a live stream of hiking the trails with Kevin in Nara? I would love to do that, but the signals are not that good out there in Nara, in the mountains, they don't have very strong signals, but I might do something um, like a main channel episode with Kevin hiking. That would be fun. Cause the guy, I think Kevin, he wears like, he looks like he's in the army. He's got like an AK-40, like, I don't know if they're fake or real. I don't know what he has out there, but he's, but he's like a hunter in, in the forest and with the beard and stuff. It, it's as though he's, he's like living in Montana or something. I'd love to do, do something out there with Kevin in the, in the mountains. Do you play golf? I used to, Nathaniel. I used to, I was in, um, I went to Ohio State University and we had the amazing golf course designed by Jack Nicholas that students could use. It wasn't just 18 holes, I think they had 36 holes, scarlet and gray the course was called and would play there every now and then. Yeah, OSU is gorgeous, it is a beautiful campus. Very welcome. Can I actually walk in those red buildings? What are those with the many floors? This is the Tokyo Station Hotel here. Do you see the canopy in the center, in the bottom center of your screen there? That's a hotel you can stay in there. And prices are about $400 a night. It's, it's, a, it's pretty pricey. There's also a restaurant, a cafe in there. And I had an interview with a company. Um, I was actually Yokohama FM, a radio station, interviewed me inside there a few years ago. Um, that was the only time I was able to afford that place. Yes, so Ham, 43210 is the zip code for Ohio State University. <laughs> not, not a lot of people know that. 43210, one of the most famous zip codes. Moving to Montana, going to be a dental floss tycoon. JTB from abroad is helpful in getting the Ghibli tickets. Yeah, I would say JTB, you have to kind of book from, book in advance to get them or get it from the convenience stores. Any other questions here before we end? Uh, what did you learn at university? 
economics and English literature. I had a double major. I could get two degrees for the price of one, so I just kept on studying. And the more I studied, the more credit hours that I took. Most people took 15. I was taking 23, which was the maximum. So I was able to get two degrees instead of one, which is which was making the best use of the money. Um, so I studied economics and uh, English literature because I like to, to read books and, and talk about that. It's nice. Um, now it's moving fast here. How, how long did it take you to converse in Japanese? I don't know. I, 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 I would say I'm conversational, but I'm, there's a lot of stuff I don't know too. I'm not perfect. I, I think it took about 10 years because I, I didn't really study Japanese at all. I've never gone to a Japanese school to study. I study from books and I just talk to people. That's the best way to learn, maybe. Yeah. Where is the best place to see Fujisan in the spring? Mm, that's a good question. Um, Hakone. The thing is, the later it gets in the year, the harder it is to see Mount Fuji. And in the summer, there'll be days, even though it's completely sunny, you won't be able to see at all because of the humidity. It just, it, it makes like a, a mask and you can't see Mount Fuji at all. The JLPT is pretty hard. I failed um, level two. I failed by one point um, level two. And I, I, and I think I failed because I was intimidated. I was the only non-Asian in there. Everyone was from Korea or China and it's, it smelled like Korea or China in there. And it was just really intimidating. They, and I figured like all, everyone in China already knows the kanji. So I, I, I don't know, I just, I failed. I freaked, I freaked myself out. I tried to talk to people I tried to talk to the other people. I'm, I'm a social person, and nobody would talk back to me because I, I guess they were, they were in their study modes or just shy, and I don't know. I, I just was, I wanted to get the heck out of there, to be honest with you. But the JLPT is important if you want to get a job in Japan. You should have level two. Level three is easy. Level two is much harder. And level one is, it used to be super hard. I think it's okay now. Um, but if you could do level two, it's easier to get a, a job in Japan. It, it's a Japan language proficiency, proficiency test, JLPT. What's your favorite place to go in Japan? I, I, I don't know. Every place is special and different. I don't have a favorite. Maybe my living room because I can relax there. Um, I love Hiroshima though. I've always had, I, I lived there for, for two years in Hiroshima and I just have an affinity with that city. It's small, but it has everything in it and people are friendly and the food is good and the weather is amazing. You're right on the sea. It's good, it's a, it's, Hiroshima is a good lifestyle for living. And it's a good place to visit as well. When do you plan to get a car, a cat? Uh, Kanai's allergic. I'd love to get a cat. Kanai's not gonna let me have one. She's my cat. <laughs> or dog. I might get a hamster because I've always had them and it's been a while. Keep me company when I'm editing video. Um, Chuck, I love Japan, but I'm not keen on their 24 seven, 800 hour work week. I have to say, um, I think Americans might work harder in some ways than Japanese. They seem to be, they seem to work longer at home, not in the office. People are always working in the US and Japan, I, I think the jobs are more like paper pushing. I don't think that they work as hard. I'm not the first person to say this either. They work long. But they don't, I don't know if they work hard, but they work long because they have to. It's duty. Yeah. It's hard. It's a hard one to say. I don't know. I, I know in the U.S. people do work too much and they only get two weeks of paid vacation, if, if that. Um, in Japan, I believe they get four. Um, that's about it, huh? Should you use a rent-a-goat service for a video? What do you, what do you, oh, okay. I think there's a, I saw something on the internet with, with goats. When you're coming back to the U.S., I'm going back to the U.S. next month. Kanai and I are visiting um, family in in on the East Coast, so we'll be back for a week. But not a lot of time for meetups. Not a lot of time for meetups. Um, I'm getting a Sphinx cat in two weeks. Oh, Queen of Tacos! Nice. We're gonna have to share your cat though, because Kanai won't let us have one. Um, what else we got? Mitsua in Edgewood. Water, New Jersey. What exit is that on the turnpike? Or is that the, is that the parkway? I used to live in Torrance Park. So I'm looking at the live stream here. I think that's about it. Guys, so if you do, if you do make the walk here, do not freak out. If you are underground, take advantage of it. And I think you're gonna find a wealth of stuff to see and do. 
all of the shops like like Ghibli shop and, and Kit Kats and things like this you can find underneath Tokyo Station there's no reason for you to carry that in your bag for two weeks because they're available here and to be honest with you a lot of the shopping you can be do, can be done at the airport there's a Uniqlo at, at every airport now so uh, as well as the shops carrying Kit Kats and things like that that people like to buy so have fun Tokyo Station is more than just a place for trains it's a complete labyrinth of shops and mazes and now hopefully it's not so intimidating for you when you go underneath there enjoy the experience everybody because that's why you're here traveling see you next time bye from tokyo station <laughs>